Hello and welcome to Woodland Sticks. Uh, this will be series five. Uh, in series four, we bent the buffalo horn, which is here. I haven't done nothing to it. That is exactly how we left it. Uh, so today, what we're going to concentrate on is actually getting the shape. So what we start off with is we're looking for the horseshoe shape which we've got. We now need to do the inside line first. So when you're filing down, we file the inside line first, get that to the shape you want, and then we follow off with the back. So what I'll do is I'll file this off while you're with me. We'll get this smoothed off and, and looking nice, and then we'll switch off. I'll round some of this off so that's just a basically a sort of only a matter of me doing it so you won't learn a lot from that so i'll do the middle bit and then we'll switch off i'll do some more of the other and then we'll see how we go from there so all right so i'll show you what i mean now about sorting the center out it's getting it to a, be a nice shape um there's a ram's horn one there so we've got a nice even roll round handle so that's what we're going to be aiming for today to get a nice rounded shape so we'll have a go at that now so if my cameraman can move me around here yeah just put that in the nice now first of all i've got to try and get a, a lump out of this corner this is where we bent and you can see what i said on the last one about how it swells out that's what's happened there so Right, so we'll dead take some of that middle away. Now you need a good, sharp, heavy duty sort of rasp, really, for the whole work. Well, any work, really. Uh, you'd be surprised how much time that, that saves you. Any any sort of heavy duty rasps. Right, so we'll use this half round because I want to do the shape. I shan't be talking a lot because I'm just trying to get this breath all the while. So I'll just some of this out. Just keep having a look keep looking at your shape the shape i've got there i really want to take a bit more out of this line here if you can see that i just need to go a bit deeper in there so i'll concentrate on that bit first and take some away Just keep having a having a look, hold it up, look it through. I still think I need a little bit more just in out of there. right now I'm happy with that I'd like to take just a touch off of there and then we'll work our way around that bit right so now you can see the sort of horseshoe shape coming I oh, so still want a bit more away from there, and then we'll work into there. It's a better job in the winter time. It's a bit warm in here at the moment.
I still need a bit more across that top. So now I'll take a bit more of that away from there because I don't need all that meat there at any rate. So I'll take a bit more away from there. And then uh, that should be the middle done. So there's my shape. So I'm more as happy with that. I say the, the, we can reheat this again. As long as we don't let it go out, put pressure on to here, heat it, and then if we wanted, we can push that nose in. So once I catch my breath, I'll do a bit more filing, and then we'll come back to you in a little while. All right, so shan't be too. Right, so we've now finished the filing, so I've now got my shape that I'm looking for, so it's nice and even running around. So I've got nice flow round on the inside line, that's completely done, and I've copied it round on the outside line. So now what I'm looking for is I'm looking for somewhere about an inch and an eighth in depth here, and an inch of thickness there. So they're not completely round, they're just slightly oval. The tapering would start from around here, this area somewhere, tapered down for your nose. The other thing I will point out is, I do like a heel on mine, and the distance from the heel to the handle, if I'm doing a small head, which this will be, it'll be a small walker, that's three inches from there. I've already cut my piece off, so I'd be doing it while we're on screen. So I've already taken a piece off, and I've left that at three inches. That, I think, is ideal for a small stick. If I'm doing a crook or a larger stick, then I can go up to about three and a half to possibly four inches, but normally three and a half for a bigger stick. So that's all set. Got me nice heel, which is what we call that, is the heel, and that's all tapered round. So now we've got a nice flowing piece round. So from here now, uh, I want to now start to round these corners off. And the easiest way to do that, that I find, is put a white pencil somewhere. Right. So with a pencil. What we're looking for is a centre line. So we just draw a centre line, sort of roughly round to here, and that would become our, our centre for when we're rounding off. And the same would go across the top, a good centre line. That gives us an idea then of what to actually round off and work to. So we've got our line there and another one on the top. So now it's just a matter of rounding the whole lot off. So I'll put it in that way. So see me white line. Uh, so now we'll start to round off. Again with this horn is all all fine. I've taken the top file across to more or less to my white line. 
and then I'm coming down this side and join up to the other one. So that's that section basically done obviously there's got to be some finer work on there but you work all the way around so you quartered everything up and then you file down to to your line I'll do that one on there how best to do it so you can see what I'm doing um it will come in there right, so we use a half round one again see my pencil line there I haven't got one in the middle I should have done so I'll put one into there. That just gives you a rough idea as to where you are. Uh, So as you can see now, we've got both sides rounded over. Obviously you copy the same, do the same that side, and we get the whole lot nicely rounded off and shaped. Right the way round and right the way back up to the, to the heel. I never personally do from the heel this way. I leave that as a square. I find it a lot easier to shank it and join it up to the stick by having it in a square. So then I'm going to have to switch off again and I'm going to catch my breath I'll file some more of this away and then we'll come back and I should have everything ready and then we'll uh, actually bend the nose so you can see what I've started off and how we've started so now I'll do the rest and then we'll come back and bend the nose Right so I've now rounded everything off it's all done all the way round so now what I want to do now is to put a turn in here and put a nice little nose on the end of it so to do that uh, you need a set of mold grips or this is the way I do it I'm not saying that's an easy way I'm not saying it's a good way but it's the way I do it I use a pair of mold grips clenched onto there heat the area I want and then I bend it round with the mole grip. So you do need something like that to do it the way I do it. So, right, we'll have a go at it. They're not 100% guaranteed that they're not going to split or break or whatever else. So these are funny old horns to work with, but what we'll do is uh, decide as to where to put your nose. You need, once your sticker's finished, where your head joins the stick you're looking to put your the bottom of your scroll about a quarter of an inch higher than the, the end so you're looking for something around about there so if we mark that off that's going to be basically the bottom of our scroll so I want the heat in here somewhere and only in there and bend that piece round so that's the bit I'm looking at heating and bending right so I'll set it up in the voice uh, I'll take these right the way round so join up it just gives me an idea then or a guide as to what I'm doing right so I put them into the voice into there like that Tighten him up. Alright, so everything is held nice. There's the bit I want to do. So first I want to clean that up. I want to do some work on that first. I want the inside, I can take it out to deep actually. The inside I need to be nice and smooth. 
because if you've got any deep cuts where your rasp has been that's a place where buffalo horn tends to tear so use a medium collar and just give that a good collar them down so you're getting a fairly decent smooth area right so back into there again up now I like to put a channel in the front God I should no I don't do all this it's so quick right so now I want to put a little bent in here so that's where the bend is going so don't put the dent in what I'm actually doing is weakening I like to take a piece of this away. Cutting it to the bottom of the rock. All the way around. Right. So now we can start to heat that part up. I always put a tourniquet around here so I'm not stretching my horn back. So I like to put a a wire around it and that just holds everything into into place and stop anything from opening up again that's got it it's all nice and tight right so now I heat that area up but Don't heat too much under there. Just heat the sides, the same as you've done before, and just keep the heat going gently into it. And not too much of a hurry this time, just nice and gently warm your area up. Again, with a lot of this sort of work, you, that's handy to have another pair of hands at times, but I have worked this out so I can get it round on my own. A little bit of burn coming in there, so I don't want to do too much of that. It's starting to soften up now. So I don't want too much of this burn into it. And it's starting to go now. So the idea now is to just keep it a little gentle bit of pressure onto it. Start to pull them up. Well, 
leave it that for the time. I want to look underneath, make sure I've got no cracking or anything nasty going on underneath. And I also want to keep this gap clear. Otherwise they start to force each other. And that's when it puts a lot of pressure onto that back. So, so you just every now and again stop and give it a bit of a fire leak. Don't need too much of a hurry. just to hold that for me. I'll just hold that still a second. Right, so I've got my piece of rope. I'd like to put a, a turn onto there. Don't let that go back. And then let's take a turn somewhere else. Right, you can let it go now. All right, so if you have a look underneath, if we can get down underneath and have a look, you can see the sort of cracking I'm talking about. So that's not too healthy. So the idea is now is to file that away, get rid of that cracking. center, especially on the outer edges. See where the wire comes in handy. It's stopping that from pulling open here. Uh, just put no pressure on that at all. So that's why I put that on. Right, so there's a bit more heat into that now. So I'll take it up a bit further. So that's where you need two of you really, but that's not coming too bad.
Tate. Head is in the way, but I was coming around nice and tight me rope up. So you do need some way to tie this off ahead. Right, so it's going around there quite nicely. So we'll let it cool down at that for a minute. Uh, I have used water on these before and haven't had a lot of any problems with it. So I'll cool it off a bit. And I like to finish it off in the in the voice. That's the only time I ever call buffalo horn off, I don't cool it off, not when I'm doing the, the big bend, this I can get the coldness into that enough to stop it from moving or cracking or anything else, so I'll just cool that right down. Right, right, so we should be cold enough now. I'll just slacken me rope off. You must have, you've got to sort out somewhere if you're doing it this method, somewhere to tie your other end of your rope off uh, so you can just sort of quickly whip it on. Right, so we take the mole grips off and we'll have a look, see what we've done. Alright, so looking at the, the horn, we've got a little bit of fleck in there, nothing at all to worry about. So that'll all file off and I'll clean up in here uh, and then we'll go on with the next stage. So I'll get the wire off, don't need that on in there because I'm going to do the rest into the, into the voice. So I'll take this wire off. Right, we'll have a little bit of a, a clean up. So I'm going to clean out a lot of this. That's all nice and clean, and I like to take these edges off as well. They're the bits that sort of swell out as you're bending it round. I'll take it Some down, down the good horn. 
the same the other side. Take the swelling off. The more horn you take off, the easier it is to bend because you're working on it then a bit. If you take too much away, it tends to make the nose look a bit ridiculous. Right, so that's that bit. Now I've got that little bit of fleck in there, so I'll take that off again with a nice smooth file. So that's all more or less taken down now. Alright, so now I want to put it into the voice like that and heat and close up and pull that round. But I don't need all that on there, so I'll just go and whip a bit of that off. I shan't be a second. I want it. Now I'm trying to arrange it in the voice. <laughs> so I'll sit in there like that. I'm going to heat it up again. Just firing the heat into the bit where I've already bent. So just hold it into place and just gently turn your voice. And even bring your nose in. So I'm looking at the outside line of that and I think that's more or less enough now turned in. Once I've cleaned that out, if I need be, I can always put another little nip onto there and tuck him in a bit further. And before I do too much more, I can also alter the shape of that. So we'll switch off for a little while. I'll let that cool down a bit more. Then we'll sort the nose out. And then I'll sort the actual shape out again. And we'll see how we go from there. Right, so it's all cooled down nicely now to the touch. So what I want to do now is just show you how, we'll, how we sort of finalise and smooth out and clear up. And do our nose so I've got uh, just a little crack there nothing to worry about at all so I'll start with that out a bit and uh, I'll just give it a good tidy up and then we'll come inside
then they will come off the inside of the curl I'll try and just open it up a little bit so I'm cutting a bit out of this front part there and going down into the into the bottom Makers have got their own way of finishing the nose. I like to sort of come in with a bit of a straight rather than this bulbous bit here. I like to take some of that away, so I'll take that off now. running in nice now I'll just show you that it's running in nicely now to the scroll so I'll just clean it a, a little bit more in there um, yeah, way. Right, so I just want to take some of this part away inside it and make sure we've got no no cracking across the bottom which we haven't got that all looks, that all looks fine and we've got nice and clean inside line now look at that I'd like to I'd like to shape them so I'm going to tuck it in just a bit further Again, it's quite a simple, simple thing, set it in your voice. Let's get it under a little bit of pressure so it holds tight. ready to go, that sort of turns quite, quite easy, so you just see it starting to roll around there, so that's about what I would say is right, so that's my finished nose, I'll just give him a bit more tidying up and then cool him down, cool him down first I think, there's no bit of stuff underneath it. Just give me a little dose in water. I find once the outside is sort of cooled right off, that'll stay, stay set. The thinner your horn, the less power it's got to open back up again. So I just give it a good quench with with the water. Right, 
dried, I think that's there. Yeah, that's cold enough. Right, so that's our scroll done. Obviously needs tidying up once we start doing the rest of it. Now looking at it, I like to pull that nose in. That's a bit too far out for shape. But like when we done the first bit, you have to be careful. Once I've bent it in, I have to let it go completely cold before I let it go. So what I want to do now is heat that section and pull in on that. One of the easiest ways I find to do that is with a sash clamp. So I've got it here ready. So I can put mine into the vise. I'll hold that. And then I can put my horn into it like that because I want to put pressure right into that bit. So just make sure it don't catch me. Nose bit. Right, again, I want to heat it, so I need to put a little bit of pressure on it to stop it from opening up. So I put a little bit of pressure onto it. Now I just want to heat into that area, soften it up a bit, and pull the nose in. So when you're working with horn, it's not a it's not a five minute job. It is quite a a time consuming job but I find it very enjoyable. I prefer my ram form work but this is also good. It makes it quite an easier handle than the ram's horn because you've got no no hollow to contend with it's nearly all solid horn so it makes it easier. Just now and when the horn is warm enough really with ram's horn it's easier to tell doesn't need nowhere near as much heat as this buffalo does but this being so dense and hard you've got to get that heat right into it to actually get it to bend and stay bent without breaking and so i'm not really worried about going all around this one because I'm only going to move it a little bit. And so I don't want like too big a gap in there, not for a, a small, small stick. Maybe what you call a little market stick when they're finished, so it's not probably a huge hole, that's a, that's a market stick there, so that's a similar line as to what I'm looking at for doing this. Most uh, stick makers got their own idea of pattern and style and one thing or another so you can often tell who has made a stick by the shape of their handles. So once you get to see different sticks you'll understand who the maker could be. Once I think that's hot enough. So I'll just try turning that in a bit. I don't know whether my cameraman could actually get across the top of that or so we can look into it. Are you doing all right? Yep. Yeah, so, right, so now just turning that in, you can see where I've heated, it's bending. So we're pulling it in. So I say, now I'm looking for a narrow, narrow piece in here. All right, to me, mm -hmm. that's a nice little shape. Not too big, you'll be surprised just how big it is once it's put on a stick. You look at that and you think that's a lady stick, but no, it's quite comfortable for a man. The only problem is now, I've heated all this, I daren't take it out. I daren't quench that down because there's too much material there. It would crack and open back up. So what we'll do is, we'll leave it at this for now. The next time we come back, They'll be the same horn, we'll clean all this up, um, polish it up, and I'll even put it onto a stick. So everything will be cleaned right up and put it onto a stick, uh, and that'll be our next our next video. Alright, so we'll uh, catch you again. Thanks very much.